So in this video I want to give some information about a long distance hiking trail in Norway, which is called the Rondanestin. The total trail length is around 440 kilometers, uh, and so far I completed around half of it, so a little uh, over 200 kilometers. Why might this be interesting for you if you are interested in hiking and maybe you're not from Norway and you know that uh, the details are on it already? Um, one thing is that it's very easy to start. So it starts directly from the Oslo city center. So if you are considering to do a trail in Norway coming from another country, there is not much traveling in Norway. So if you arrive by, for example, through the main airport and go to the Oslo city center, um, Oslo S, which is a train station, that's right where the trail starts. So very easy to get to. As you saw in the, saw in the first picture, it goes pretty much uh, straight up north. Uh, and of course, the further north you go, um, the more difficult it is to get back to Oslo. That's why I planned my first two stages around train stations. So actually I live in Oslo, so starting the trail was quite straightforward for me. And then my first uh, part of the steam was on, uh, up to Dal, um, which was around 90 kilometers uh, trail length. Um, and I chose it simply because um, there is a train station. You could also go one town further, which is Eidswall, then you're a little around uh, over 100 kilometers, maybe 110. Uh, and then the second part, which I completed last week, was then up to Elverum, uh, which is another 130 kilometers further north. Um, north for Elverum, which is, an, as I said, around halfway of the whole trail, uh, it's getting more and more difficult. So I'm not quite sure when I will do the next parts um, or if I will ever complete the whole trail because it's simply getting more and more difficult to actually get back to, to Oslo uh, or let's say the distance to the next train station uh, or public transport is getting bigger and bigger because the trail is simply going through the middle of Norway, uh, nowhere. Uh, in any case, um, this video is not intended to um, show you fantastic videos or drone footage or anything like that. What you see in the background is just random pictures that I took with my mobile phone. Um, just to illustrate a little how it looks like. It's typical Norwegian terrain. Um, the first 200 and uh, around 20 kilometers um, that's no climbing or mountaineering or anything like that. The highest point is a little around over 700 meters. Of course, you start from sea level uh, at zero meters um, because it's right at the Oslo Fjord. Um, and the overall difficulty, the technical difficulty is rather low. Um, of course, it's, it's a lot of trail hiking, meaning single trail um, and some... Uh, and uh, some gravel roads, but none of this is really technically difficult in terms of, of climbing or mountaineering. The difficult part is, of course, the distance, and uh, that is fully dependent on how well you're trained and how much uh, other hiking you've done before. If you've done other long distance trails, of course, you, you know how to plan and uh, how to arrange your hike. Uh, if that's the first hike you've ever done, um, it can, of course, be quite long. What is important to note, um, what, there is basically no infrastructure helping you with overnight or resupply or whatever. So once you leave Oslo at the end of day one or middle of day one, Nidal, which is the northern part of Oslo, there's the last grocery store. Um, and then it's actually a few days. Um, in my case, it was un up until day four, until I came to Dal where you are back in civilization again. Um, that's what you need to plan for. So there are some cottages by the Norwegian Hiking Association, which is called DNT. Um, and I think there are ways to overnight in these cottages, at least in the Oslo area, then at least you need to book it. Um, I'm a member of DNT and I got a key for these cottages. Um, but in the greater Oslo area, you need to book them anyway because there's simply too many people wanting to use them. Um, and then north of the Oslo area, I think if it's free, you just could walk in if you have that key and you're a member of DNT. 
Uh, but that was not plan of my hike and actually I just saw one of or two of these cottages so I didn't plan my hike around these cottages. I only slept in a, t in a tent um, in the whole trail and I also took my whole food supply with me. Um, how long was it? The first part which was from Oslo to Dal, uh, as I said around 90 kilometers, um, I planned for four days um, so I left on a Friday after work uh, because I'm working in Oslo. Um, and then four days later, I arrived in Dahl and then I took the train back to uh, Oslo. Uh, then a few weeks later, I took the second part of that trail, um, meaning I took the train from Oslo to Dahl. And then it took me six days to get to Elverum. Um, that was around 130 kilometers. In practice, it's always a little more because sometimes you get lost, sometimes you take a detour and so on. Uh, but the planned length was 90 kilometers for my first part and 130 for the second part. Um, there are no fixed stages, so you can, if you are interested in that hike, you can plan it whatever you like. Um, of course, if uh, you can also walk the whole uh, distance, which is uh, 440 kilometers. Um, yeah, that's uh, up to you and what, what you're planning to do. But for me, uh, I think six days is a maximum because, again, you need to uh, bring your whole food anyway. Um, and that is a considerable weight um, that you need to consider and then need to carry around. Uh, what else did I bring equipment-wise? Um, now it's summer in Norway, so my first part I did it in May um, and now my uh, the second part in July. Um, and it would be like your normal backpacking gear, so meaning a, a backpack, a sleeping mat, a, ten, a tent, um, of course your food for, for six days, um, a sleeping bag or in my case a, a kilt, um, power banks, all that stuff that you would need. Um, I'm not going into detail because if you are interested in such a hike, I'm pretty sure you've went uh, overnight hikes before. Um, when it comes to water supply, uh, this is actually quite easy because there is a lot of water supplies along the way, uh, be it creeks or, or other sources of, of water. I personally decided to always filter my water, so I bring, um, carried a water filter. Um, normally the water quality in Norway is very, very good, so I don't think you need to be concerned if you are a little careful where you take for your water from. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, given that you are refilling, at least I was uh, many times a day, um, it's enough that only one of these uh, water sources was not clean enough. And then, of course, you uh, you might spoil your whole hike uh, if it becomes a pool party uh, from the um, middle of the hike. And uh, that's not fun. So if you are interested in that hike, how would you actually plan it? The first thing I would do is download the GPX file. Um, I'll show a, a link here in that video. Uh, of course, downloading the GPX file from the Tracking Association is for free. Uh, then you can import it to whatever hiking app, you, app you're using. If I, I personally, I use Komoot, um, which is both free, but I use the premium version because it has a little more planning functionality. But there are plenty of hiking apps. There's even a free one in Norway, uh, Topo GPS, which I show on that screen right now. Um, which is very detailed. So you can just download it, open it for free and import the GPX file and then you're already good to go. In addition, the signage is very good. Um, the DNT Tracking Association uses blue color up to a certain elevation over that bec uh, becomes red. Um, so all their trails, their main trails are highlighted in blue and at crossings and so on, you see signs with uh, Rondanestein. So it's not really difficult to find it if you combine the signage and maybe a, your cell phone or a GPS device. In addition, I use the uh, Garmin Phoenix 6 watch, which always gives me an alarm if I'm off track. And for security reasons, I use an InReach Mini 2, uh, a satellite communicator. But of course, that's not necessary. Uh, at least it's not necessary <laughs> until you actually need it. Uh, and that goes back to what I said earlier. Um, there is no infrastructure and at least in my two hikes, I saw very, very few other hikers. Um, so there are areas, uh, I would say up to one day uh, or at least several hours without cell phone coverage. 
And worst case scenarios, of course, that something happens, uh, whatever you get injured or so uh, in that spot, and it might actually be many, many hours before somebody finds you. Um, but uh, of course, that's a decision you need to take. Um, are you just going to risk it? And of course, as I said, it's not really technical, but there's, of course, always um, a remote chance that something goes wrong. So if you have such a uh, satellite communicator or another emergency device, of course, just bring it. Um, talking about other hikers, as I said, there were very, very few other hikers I met along the way. So if you're looking for a campfire atmosphere and playing your guitar in the evening uh, along with other people, um, that's not going to happen, at least not uh, in these weeks where I was along the way. Um, in addition, talking about campfire, um, between, was it 15th of April and I think 15th of September, I don't remember the dates correctly, um, it's not permitted with campfires in the, uh, in the open in, in Norway. Um, what you can use is a gas stove. Uh, of course, you st still have to be careful if it's dry, uh, but there is no open fire. If there are extended periods um, where there's no rain at all, it can even be um, totally forbidden to make any kind of fire. So just watch out before you go. Are there any uh, local restrictions on, on making fire? Um, one good thing about Norway, if you're not familiar with it, it's um, you are principally allowed to camp wherever you want, with, uh, of course, many restrictions when it comes to farmland and, uh, and towns and so on. Um, very simplified, you have to be at least 150 meters away from another building or cottage uh, and so on, and you can mark, can max uh, 48 hours in one spot. Of course, you if you are doing such a hike, your plan is not to be in one spot that long anyway, so that's uh, not really relevant here. And of course, leave no trace. And um, I haven't seen any garbage whatsoever. So if people have been camping along the way before or other hikers, um, everybody follows that rule. You leave no trace. There is no garbage. You don't see any campsites. Uh, and again, there are no big campsites along the way. So w wherever you want to, just feel free to set up your tent. Um, maybe Google the uh, legal requirements if you're not familiar with them before. Almens uh, I'm pretty sure there are also English sites that explain what you are allowed to do and not to do. Um, but that simplifies the planning process immensely because you don't have to book anything in advance. Um, you just follow the track and where you want to set up your camp in the evening, you, you have to. If you have a freestanding tent, uh, if you don't have a freestanding tent, meaning one that you need to pack, um, that can be tricky in Norway because a lot of the Norwegian terrain is very rocky. So you might have one or two centimeters of, of soft uh, underground, soft earth, and then you're directly hitting rocks. Um, so as you've seen earlier, I have a freestanding tent which um, I can set up wherever I want. But if you are dependent on putting uh, packs a few centimeters into ground, that can be challenging um, in many in, uh, areas in Norway. That's simply how the ground is. is here. It's very rocky underground. All right, so that was all I thought to cover in that video. Um, as you noticed, a lot of it is not only applicable to the uh, Ronda Anestine, uh, but to hiking in Norway in general. Uh, but of course, do your own research. Uh, most of the websites and so on are also available in English. And of course, there are many uh, hiking videos, trekking videos, camping videos from other um, people living in Norway for more information. Uh, feel free to uh, connect to me on Komoot, where I upload my, my both my cycling and my hiking tracks. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment. Or if uh, I said anything wrong or anything was unclear, just uh, ask a question, I'll do my best to answer it. And if you plan to do that hike, uh, good luck.